I don't hear a lot of people saying this, like, yeah, what, what? But I'm, I'm grateful for my struggles in life, for the struggles in life. Yes. I'm wow. extremely grateful for that. Yeah. It's all in hindsight that you can really see it. Obviously, when you're going through struggles, it's like, you're like very limited, like your scope of view is very limited, but like when you're like a little bit above it, you're like, damn, I'm very grateful that I went through that. So, so I'm very when, grateful for my struggles in life. When you, when you fail, when you feel that you failed, you're, you, you rejoice in a way. What would you say? Not because, it's all after the, after the point of reflection. You're like, damn, I'm really happy that I yeah. I went through that. But like mm. when you're in a when you're in the situation, it's like you're in a tunnel. You can't really like your scope of view is very limited, so you can't really see and have any form of reflection. Right. You know, and it takes honestly a great deal of mental equity and power and discipline to be able to reflect in in the bubble. Yeah, Oof. you know. Yeah, 100%, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that. I like that. Okay. Tell us about um, your other business as well. I know you mentioned on the first half, uh, Slooper and also Lion Media or Lion Media Ad. Um, tell the audience a little bit about the business and um, what you do, some exciting news with the business. Uh, I'm sure they're going to hear about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll share that and then I can even kind of go back to even how it started because I think it's always important to hear like the pilot, how things started. Yeah, yeah but please, yeah. Yeah, Lion Media, we're, you know, it's an advertising agency that I started back in, 2019 2020 with some partners at the time you know we no, you know, no longer have those partners yeah so you know this even started from slooper because um with slooper it's uh it's like cool one of the biggest things like we didn't really know how to market how to advertise so i dove into marketing i need to figure the shit out and after figuring it out not figuring it out but after like getting into it, it's like damn i really like this i think this is definitely something that i can extend as a business and you know, offer this to other like clients as well, you know. Yeah. But yeah, advertising, I really just dove straight in. It's something that made sense to me. It's something that it's a valuable skill that anybody, anybody should have. And it's, you know, very lucrative. Yeah. And currently, right, we started out with, when I started out, I was just doing like Facebook ads, you know, running Facebook ads for like restaurants and whatnot. And then after that, uh, expanded the product line to Google ads, mm -hmm. right? And then eventually TikTok, and then eventually building like websites, doing mm -hmm. website. Um, website com conversion optimization and then snapchat and a host of other like services that ultimately a business that wants to grow will need those services to 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 reach their revenue goal right something i really focus on is like revenue right because um if it's the market that i focus on mainly right now is uh, e-commerce direct to consumer because gotcha. they're just like booming right e-commerce is booming right now everybody is starting a new e-commerce this is and that you know and just like when you look at that the overall like revenue the year over year growth it's insane mm. right yeah yeah and so i really focus on that um typically it's uh when i onboard a new client it's like oh we just want to sell like facebook or google you know like i do the strategy okay cool but after these keywords this audience creative copy um, and maybe if they don't have a website, we'll build the website and then uh, launch, them, launch, launch the ads, you know, and then yeah. we just kind of track revenue and RI and whatnot. But yeah, that's uh, Mark, that's Lion Media and uh, that's what we do. That's, that's amazing, dope. man. That's, that's dope. Amazing. You need it, man. This world is changing. Yeah. Old business is not, uh, those old models are getting, they're getting kind of dusty. Yeah. You know, you gotta, you gotta be innovative. Absolutely. You gotta be innovative. What's the biggest lesson you learned <clears throat> with this business, Lion Media? The biggest lesson that I've learned with this business, hmm, that's a that's a very good question. Yeah. Maybe this I don't know if this is like oops, it's a lesson, but it's like every business, every business um, needs marketing, right? Not a just business, but even an artist needs marketing. Right. Yeah. It's honestly one of the most powerful piece of asset that you can acquire to be able to market yourself and build it to market others. Because you could be the greatest thing, and you could be the greatest in your craft. If okay. you can't market yourself, then nobody like nobody cares. Nobody can see that, right. and you can't really, you know, you can't really make an impact with that, right? right? right. Yeah. So even if you want to be impactful, you have oh, I have a product that I wanna. This is really gonna change people's life. If you don't know how to market and get those, you know, get this to people, then nobody cares. You can't make an impact in the world. So that's, right, that's yeah. one of the biggest things, honestly, with marketing. That yeah, because it's like spreading awareness, getting the product in front of people's eyes that otherwise would never see that. Strategically, yeah, yeah for strategically. Sure. That's the biggest strategically. Yeah. So your your business, it sounds like it solves a huge problem for like maybe a lot of co companies that may start up. What would you say is your, I guess, niche? If you if you like attack these markets for companies that are already established for your company. So. Or do you target them at all? So what is my niche market? Yeah. Okay. Right now, so I've had to like kind of re-strategize uh, the market that we're going after. Mm -hmm. Before it was 
uh, BDB, uh, not BDB, but like most of focus like, uh, um, yeah, BDB business is essentially business, business, right. business to business, yeah. you know. But now it's most of focus like direct to consumer, direct to consumer. Yeah, direct to consumer. As I mentioned, it's like the like e-commerce is just booming and exploding, right? Yeah. And honestly, that's where I have a, a lot of experience to, as well. Yeah. You know, so that's that's the current market that I go after. Did you mainly gain that experience through like Slooper? No, other, actually. Other things. No, actually, and this is actually something that not a lot of people know. So, mm. when I was building the business, like uh, before it's line, before it was before it's all uh, it's. Before the company was called Renaissance Media, that's when I had partners. Mm -hmm. But then I split with my partners back then, and then we kind of went on a separate way. We took our clients, yeah. and then I rebranded it under Lion Media, gotcha. right? But at the time, when I had my partners, it's, uh, you know, we were really trying to grow this thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, it was really tough, man, because, yeah, we had some capital, but, like, the capital that we had really just covered our rent, you know? And this is, like, man, this is really, like, the time when I struggled, like, struggle in this journey. It's, uh, yeah. Like sometimes we didn't have money for food, bro. <laughs> and then oh, um, I would have to Instacart just for money for food right. and other things. You yeah, know? do like side gigs. And it, gig, gig, exactly. Yeah. Just That's a reality of a lot of entrepreneurs starting their business. But it, sorry, continue though. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, and then it, it, it came to a point where it was like, okay, cool, we need to figure something out, yeah. something else out. Because we were still like brand new into this thing. It's like the hardest thing about business is acquiring your, cli it's acquiring your clients, you know, client acquisition. Yeah. And so we weren't the best at that. You know, yeah, we knew how to run Facebook ad, but... You know, we weren't the best at actually getting clients for ourselves, you know. Yeah. And so that's one of the biggest thing. And so what we did actually, this is very, very smart. And I wish I would have thought about this before, but like we actually, all of us went to go work for other agencies, you know. We went to go work for other agencies to, to gain the knowledge. That's right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now we have all this experience, like m m managing multiple clients. At the same time, we have our clients we're, we're managing, you know. Yeah. And so not only now we have like the revenue to be able to cover also, but we actually get the, the experience yeah. as well. Very smart. You know, really smart. so yeah. honestly, and, and I think that's one of the biggest thing that a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, like, they sacrifice everything. Oh, I'm going to go, like, head on with this business. Right. But it's like, you have to think about, like, you have to be, like, realistic about things, too. You know? Absolutely. Most businesses don't, right. d don't succeed. 90% of it fails. Yeah. And so if you don't have money to cover yourself, like, you know, you rent, you know, other things than I... Yeah, life goes on. Those yeah. bills continue. And th this is what I was talking to you about in terms of like, so like the, the renewable energy solar business that I'm mm -hmm. getting into, um, you know, me and my partners figured it'd be smart to work under uh, a sales company, be the salesman, learn there and get go. educated on it first. And then gain the clientele, gain the experience. And then while we, you know, while we set up uh, our business to scale on the side, I mean, that's, I, I relate to that 100%, man, yeah. for sure. So I think that's, honest, that's a... a big secret out of not a secret but it's just not a lot of people do that right uh, it may be an ego thing whatever because i the think time it's or, it or it could ego. be ignorance they think entrepreneurship <laughs> is just let's yeah. just dive into it yeah. forget about everything else yeah. yeah and then you get so deep into it that now like your personal life is kind of screwed up financially there in a way go. then you got to go back to a job then it's like damn yeah. you know what i mean yeah, then, yeah. yeah same thing happened to me man i piled up a lot of debt business debt and stuff like that just to kind of make it through you right. know yeah. So, can you talk to us a little bit about that? And you alluded to that earlier in the show, and me and you've talked on a personal level. What are some of those struggles that you faced, and the realities that you faced, as a, aside from what you've named already? Like, you want to dive deep into that, or? Yeah, man. Because uh, first of all, like, I'm very, like, very, very, very much like passionate about what it is that I do. The business, because when we start in the business, it's like your baby. You yeah. want to do everything to keep it alive Hell yeah. and to feed it. You know. Hell yeah. And so, in the process of growing my business, like, I took on a lot of depth to to fund my business because you know it, and a lot of it was like private you know it's like my per like i had to like stack it up on top of like my personal you put it on your credit card yeah. and shit. exactly yeah. right, you know because yeah. like when you start a business like these companies these banks don't want to give you yeah, funding they they, no. it's a massive yeah. risk for them you absolutely, know absolutely yeah which i understood not going through that experience like no having banks, like an llc and shit exactly yeah. no banks wanted to give me money you know so like right. i had to take out personal loans to kind of fund my business you know and so it's an investment and those investments didn't really pay off at the time. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, damn, I had like a lot of debt that I got to pay off and things like that. And so, yeah, I mean, that's when shit was really scary, you know, um, stacked up a lot of debt, credit cards and whatnot, just so I can fund the business, you know. And then sometimes it's like when things aren't working out, man, it's like you're, you're, you're very narrow. You can't really see far. You're like, shit, what am I going to do? I have all this debt. My business is not really going to the direction that I want it to do. Right. It's like, what the fuck do I do? Yeah. You know, that's when it's like really scary, you know. So what, what helps you... Uh stay locked in in those moments uh what helped you not to quit and that's yeah that's a very good question obviously it's uh the biggest thing is like cool kind of have to go back on why did i even do this in the first place yeah. you know like the why into this you know because yeah man uh 
being in a country like America, it's a, that's a great opportunity, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, it's something like a, kind of something that we talked about before. It's like, I want to do something for my family. This is not just for me, you know? So yeah. every time I think about it, it's like, cool. Absolutely. This is not just for me. I have to do this. And like, absolutely. the way really to be like free and to build wealth in this country is uh, business is one of the things. After there's multiple ways, but like business is one of those things that really can free you, yeah. you know? And so that's what kind of kept me going. And then eventually, as like the struggles go, you learn, you learn. That's the biggest thing. You're like, you learn, like all that thing, all that learning that like, compounds and then you figure it out eventually. Oh, okay, good. So it wasn't a waste. Now I can, this is, this is what it's working. Now I can keep doing this. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. 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 That's a great perspective, man. Yeah. I heard somebody talk about like contrast and it wasn't so much about business. It was more so in life, but it applies to everything. It's not until you know what you don't want that you can identify 100% what you do want. Mm-hmm. And I might have said on the podcast before, but yeah, you got to, you know, or as someone said, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm sure you guys have heard that. Absolutely. And yeah, um, yeah man, um, I, a lot of people don't do that. And But we're, like you said, it might be ignorance. We're not taught perseverance. Um, or you might hear about it, but, you know, it's one thing to, to hear about it or to read it or whatever, but when you apply it. Because you get all that knowledge, people out. I'm sure entrepreneurs in the early stages are going to go out, you know, try to get educated on what it means to be an entrepreneur and stuff like that. Yeah. Then you got to apply it because that day is coming for the information to be, you exactly. know, put to action, you know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It doesn't, it's, it's a, well just said. a big, big risk. It's big worth it. It's worth it, People man. Yeah. don't like to take those type of risks because yeah, it's man. very scary. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely like a long, long journey. It's like it's it's long <laughs> when you hear these uh these like stories though of like these big business people though like it's pretty common to hear like a rough start yeah. oh yeah one thousand percent. it's pretty it's journey pretty in terms of like you may think that it's the end of the world but like it might be just be the beginning yeah it might be an awakening it might be something like you you never fucking know like where yeah. you could be and, yeah. you know yeah. and that's the beauty of it honestly i think the, the i think the beauty of it to me personally is the unknown is the abyss is the thing that may freak people out you know i think that's the yeah. cool part otherwise if everything was just so easy we could just get get it everybody everybody would, rich be, so yeah, easily, everybody would do it then you know the game wouldn't be as you know tantalizing it wouldn't be as uh fulfilling i guess but I mean, that that's that's so true that that's very true yeah for sure let's talk one last thing in terms of business man you dropped hella gems <laughs> yeah, appreciate that. um i appreciate you and um you, you talk a lot about your business Talk about the significance of like relationships and how I guess important it is for your business models that you have. Yeah, honestly, relationship in business is I don't want to say everything because that's what I was gonna say, but it's a lot of things. Building up business relationships with potential clients, right? Because um, even like when I did like when I did have a like an agency job, right? As I built a lot of relationship with like entrepreneurs, founders, and things like that, you know. And today, a lot of those are my clients now, right? And, mm. yeah, just building those relationships with those individuals, man, because you, you never know who you want. You never you never know who you're going to meet, right? Uh, you go to a coffee shop, like, you never know who you're going to meet there, too, as well, right? But I don't know really how to answer that, but, yeah, relationship is a, is a major thing in business. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, for sure. Is, is, is the relationship building process, um, is, it, is it about focusing about the person first in terms of just having a, uh, I recognize you as a person before opportunity mindset, or do you think um, a lot, like a lot of people are just skipping through that and just saying like, well, let me talk to this person because they're, they're you know they're rich or this person clearly you know could be another client. Yeah. Like the the, the beginning stages of that building. Yeah, that, that that's honestly <clears throat> a good question because I know a lot of people go about building relationships like the wrong way. Yeah. They see somebody as just an opportunity. Not even an opportunity to, like, oh, what can I take from this right, individual? Right. But, like, think about, like, oh, what can I offer to this individual? Right, right. right what yeah. kind of skill set can you, in exchange, to not, like, from a monetary, but, like, just to establish the relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. And don't just try to, don't just try to, like, take the fruit right right now, you right. know, but it's, like, build and foster the relationship with, hey, like, what can I do for you? Anything that I can help you with? Oh, let me connect you to this individual because yeah. I know that you need help with this, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's the whole process of building a relationship, mm-hmm. and it takes months and years Take months. I've the deals that I've closed now. I remember I started this relationship, the relationship like a year back. Jeez. Like when you, when you talk about like a, a deal life cycle, you know, like it can last up to a, a year. Yeah, planting you know, seeds, man. Planting the seeds. Yeah, you're planting seeds. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, for sure. So we've been talking about <clears throat> like the significance of it, the importance of it. But like, can you name a time or like a certain situation where you had a relationship that I don't want to say like fell out, but like 
more so was like it took an interesting turn per se do you have anything like any stories that you can tell oh yeah uh, us on that like something that would be like yeah this crazy thing happened with this person like yeah absolutely like that. And, and i was like i said like my previous business renaissance media like i had partners like that relationship quickly took a turn mm. quickly because the thing is that uh, especially when you just really new into entrepreneurship into business when you start making money people get greedy you know it's like oh i think i should have this much or this isn't this, that you know right and so yeah and like we, we got greedy and so when you get greed people want to like really focus on themselves right. essentially you know you think and ego so, plays into that at least in your situation do you think ego played into that it's ego selfishness money and a whole of other things you know which yeah. essentially kind of severed the relationship that i had with, with my partner because we were great friends you know right. oh, uh, prior to that but now we don't even talk wow. because of business wow. and this is common in this is common in business right this is very common yeah. Wow, I was just about to ask you, like, does do you think that self-aggrandizement that they had led to, uh, or did it lead to? But you just answered that question. If you could change things, though, at least what you could control, which is what you did, which is there anything that you would change in terms of that relationship or how you moved? Yeah, one thousand percent. Because uh, I think a lot of it was because of me too. I was very young, immature at the time too, as well. You mm. know, so I think I could have certainly gone about because essentially I got started the thing, and so I was the leader. So like, there's definitely a lot of things that I could have kind of established in the beginning. You know, yeah. even when I like, building a relationship, just kind of. It's starting a business with partners, establishing like the shares and stuff like that. That's not something that I, we, we never really did, you know. Right, right. Later up, that ended up being a big thing. Was that due to, to like ignorance or like yeah, ignorance. just in all? Oh, okay. Yeah, ignorance. Okay. It was gotcha. really due to ignorance, you know. Gotcha. I didn't understand a lot of this thing, you know. When you start a business, like how much share, how much equity of the company are you supposed to give to, to your partner and stuff like that, yeah. you know. So I didn't, it was ignorance. That's yeah. beautiful. What, um, because so, it leads straight to the point of that's how you learn, yeah. exactly. Yeah, making those mistakes. But so I'm sorry, go no, ahead. No, no, you're fine. Yeah. Um, I love tying it all together, but uh, my my question is: so, what would you say about going into business with your friends? Now, so uh, uh, it's a thing that's not recommended at all in business. Yeah, because it all like I don't know what the percentage is, but like a disproportionate amount of percentage is gonna end up not good, and then that's just severe relationship. Even with family members, it's severe that, and sometimes it's just something that's never healed or never fixed. Yeah. So me personally, it's um because. Right now, I have a business like, you know, Slooper. It's with my brother, yeah. right? And so, yeah, and there's been some times to where things kind of got shaky. That relationship got really shaky. Oof, wow. You know? So, I think it's, it's something you got to just got to be very careful. Yeah. Very careful. Like, set boundaries in the beginning, you know? Yeah. Even though it's family, it's your friends, set boundaries, sign paperwork just to kind of protect yourself. That's the biggest thing. I think you just named the biggest thing. I feel like if in order to have any relationship that will work well, right, it's establishing the boundaries setting the expectations exactly. so that and then co constantly updating those expectations right mm -hmm. things yeah. evolve so you can't the something that was established six months ago doesn't necessarily mean that's what it is now because things may have changed business-wise financially or people change people, people change. change people are fickle mm -hmm. you know what i mean so that's uh that's uh, you make a good point man uh, i'm relating to all of this stuff yeah me too <laughs> I mean, you more than me, but yeah, we, we we've had our you know yeah our sit downs over paper too. And, Absolutely, um, yeah. No bad blood, but it's it was it was clear that certain things uh, weren't all the way addressed, and we thought we were doing it, like you said, out of ignorance. Yeah, we tried to take initiative um, for a lot of things too. So I understand how it could be. Yeah, and um, accountability. Yeah, you know, gotta have out that. of all of us, you know. And I got I applaud you for for you your answer to that question earlier. It's like you took accountability. Yeah. Oh yeah. You yeah. first want to raise your hand, like yeah, I I, I played into that too. So yeah. that's cool, you know. Yeah, it's got to be hard being the the guy on top too, you know, because the toughest toughest decisions are gonna be made by you. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, the thing with leadership. Yeah, you know, leadership is hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to bear the brunt of your decisions and mm. live with it and represent it and everything. <laughs> exactly. That's beautiful, man. So, last topic that I wanted to get into before we end things here, uh, it's back on the fitness topic. Because um, what better than you know, a couple curls, you know, <laughs> Mister Mister Ten Years Straight Fitness <laughs> Guru. Man, yeah. Uh, so I know I know both are very important, right? I know both are very important, but. I wanted to see which one do you lean towards the most? And I think I have an idea, but I'm just <laughs> going to go and ask it. Uh, we got to make sure that your nutrition is right. You're eating, putting the good things in your body. Like you just introduced like the, uh, the IV to mm -hmm. us. The good uh, IV, yeah. Thank you for that, by the way. Absolutely. And the creatine, by the way. It's amazing. Shout out. Bro, bro. Um, Check it out. Yes, absolutely. Liquid IV creatine. Check it out. Um, 
and obviously going to the gym, making sure that you're doing your fitness, cardio, whatever, resistance training. In your opinion, based on your results, what do you think you lean towards more in terms of importance for that? I know they're both important, but like, mm-hmm. what do you think t- uh, trumps the other in terms of importance? Yeah, it's, it's always the diet, the nutritional aspect of it, always. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just the science shows that. It's not even just an opinion thing. It's like the science shows that. Yeah, the yeah. science, just the nutrition. It's, it's, it's like the 80 of 20. Yeah, 80% of it is nutrition. 80%? 80% of it is nutrition. Mm, of it is nutrition. Wow. Damn. So you would argue that the muscle um, does need to be pushed to be stimulated, but it doesn't take a lot for it to stimulate. Not that. There is, so you can, because uh, like your daily activity kind of depends on like what you do, like for work or whatnot, right, right. you know. Um, if you're like eating healthy and you're eating like the right food, yeah. I mean, your, your body will grow just doing your normal activity. Your oh, body wow. will, but like marginally though, marginally, if you right. want to enhance that, obviously supplementing that would work out would just accelerate the growth of the muscle. Got you. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Can't be yeah. eating McDonald's and oh, going to dude, the gym, man. Uh, Please don't. I, don't I know don't guys that do that. I know guys that do that. It's been probably a couple of years since I'm eating McDonald's. I think it's just, with my current understanding and knowledge, not only about business, but about like nutrition, it's, um, I mean, it's not good for you. Don't do it. <laughs> no, Simply, Simply put, yeah. yeah. Don't do it. Just stay away from that stuff, no. man. Yeah. They, uh, they sprinkle the pesticides on those fries <laughs> on the farm and they don't they can't go buy them for like three days and then, and then we eat that <laughs> just please you can't go buy it for three days it's crazy <laughs> that's toxic yeah that's yeah toxic. and then you put that in your body so um yeah. what about you raw what's your opinion on that um i didn't know the ratio was that big um but there's no doubt nutrition yeah um because i think we're talking about at the break you can't perform the best if you don't feel the best. And the That's only way right. you're going to feel the best is, you know, putting the right thing in the gas tank. Absolutely. Um, I'm sure we've all heard it, but yeah. your body's a Ferrari, you know, and if you're going to put low grade into a Ferrari, you're going to be sitting on the side of the road at some point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to be sitting on the side of the road at some point. <laughs> and guess nice. what? You're going to call the dealership, your doctor, and yeah. you're going to say, what's going on? And they're going to say, did you put that low grade in there? And you're going to be like, I sure did, buddy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would say that. Um, but. Frank has inspired me in in, in, a, in a lot of ways. The content he's put out there. Um, when I do get in that gym, I'm I know sorry, it's man. time to work. I know it's like everybody has their own pace. But for the ones that really want to see change and growth, uh, you got me really trying to push myself. Um, and I think that the intensity of the workout, but definitely the foundation being the nutrition, um, that's where my mindset is these days. As I get better and better in this fitness journey. 100%. I love that, man. I love yeah. that. Yeah, we're going to wrap up here, guys. This has been a great episode. Oof. Um, man, I wanted to thank you so much for hosting us and just dropping so many gems for our audience, man. Yeah, Absolutely. For man. sure. I'm, thank you so much. I dude. appreciate you for the drive coming over here and just introducing me to the to your audience and whatnot. You know, yeah. So I really hope a lot of people can extract something that can help them grow in one way or another. You know? But thank you. Absolutely. Yeah.